Hi, I'm Marie Eldridge. And I'm Cheryl Duncan. Welcome to HQ Live. So, I'm going to talk about pantographs. And I'm going to talk about groovy boards. <laughs> so let's get started. First of all, let's talk about pantographs a little bit. Pantographs are a paper pattern that you put behind your machine. It lays out on the table. You follow the pattern with a laser light and your machine stitches this beautiful quilt out in front. You know, it's easy for people that aren't confident with their machine from the front, and yet they can have a really nice finished quilt. Right, yes, and you have this great pattern. You can have lots of different patterns. So let's talk about patterns. Here's one. This is called Bellflower, and this one looks pretty complex. Actually, this would be not so hard to quilt because you can see those, can you just hold on to that? Sure. sure. You have just a little kind of curls and twists that you have to follow. So you kind of get an idea of the pattern. You always want to trace the pattern with your finger so you know which way you're going to go. Sometimes I even draw myself some little arrows of which way to go until I feel comfortable with it. Yeah. But I'll usually go through the pattern all the way through once and then I feel pretty comfortable about which way it's going unless I stop. <laughs> so what you're saying is Shorter distances are actually easier than longer distances. A shorter line that you have to stay on because you have to follow that line with the laser light. So you just want, you know, kind of small curves are easy to stay on rather than trying to take your machine and go, ooh, great big curve and back. So little curves, they work good. All right, so that one's called Bellflower. This one is one you can see it's about a five or six inch pattern. And that pattern, uh, you could probably quilt two of those before you would have to advance your fabric. So on a 16, an HQ 16, I probably wouldn't choose a pantograph that is wider than 10 or 11 inches. Probably 11 inches would be my max. And then on an Avante, I'm probably thinking, you know, you probably want to go about four or five inches smaller. And it depends on the quilt because your quilt's going to build up on your frame and then that takes part of your throat space. So on an Avante, I would probably do 12 inches, right around in there, 12, 13 inches maybe at the most. Uh, if you moved up to an Amara, you could add two inches to that and then to an Infinity, probably two inches. So you're probably around 16 inches which here's a pattern that it actually is not, let's see if we can get that where you can see it. So you can see on this pattern, you're only going to quilt the black part or the dark print, but it also shows you how this one nests in. This one is called Ramblin' Rose, and it is really pretty quilted out and how it nests in. You can't see the different rows. so. It is, it's a good wide one. I don't think you could fit this on all of the machines because it comes in and out so much, right? Well, and this looks like this is the exact same pattern as this. Right, and that's what helps you as you advance your fabric. Okay. So we're gonna get into this and talk about how to set this up and make it all work. All right. So I'm pulling up my sleeves. <laughs> You're getting into it, aren't you? <laughs> I have already put... I will move out of your way All here. Right, so you can just be like my assistant here. Okay. And, and what I've done is I've already taped the paper pattern to the table. And I like to put it right along the back of the table because then I know that it's straight. The other thing I've done is to set this up is I always drop my needle and you can see that I have the needle right in the corner. Usually when I do an edge to edge, I like to be a little off the fabric, so a little bit out on the batting, maybe about a half an inch, an inch. Uh, and then if it turns out that I have like a half a bunny on one side, then I have a half a bunny on the top, a half a bunny on the side, 
Then when I get to the bottom of the quilt, if I have a half a bunny, I don't have to try and make it work exactly. So, so you'd go off on all four <coughs> sides then? So I would go stitch in the batting on all four sides. And then when I end, it's okay if I end in the batting, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have to end exactly on the fabric. Okay, the other thing that you can see that I've done here is I have stitched this fabric right to the very edge. The first thing I did, I don't know if you can see it, but I have a plumb line or a straight line. I put a channel, channel lock, lock on my machine. I put it on the wheel and then I stitched that straight line all the way across. So I have that straight line that then I can bring my fabric up to and pin it and then I stitch that down right on that straight line. So I know I'm starting out square, so at least I'll start square, we'll end square. How about that? That's a good idea. All right. Uh, what else? I have the glide foot on. <laughs> so oh. the glide foot is amazing for doing pantographs. I think it was made just for that. Well, you can't see what you're doing when you're back here. And what would happen? If you didn't have your sides faced <laughs> down and you had your regular foot on, you can really have a mess when that foot gets caught and sews into that fabric. That is exactly, and I thought, oh, I'm such a good sewer, that'll never happen. Well, guess what? Every once in a while, a seam is not really tight, or sometimes, you know, if you don't sew that really close to the edge, that fabric will flip over. So I strongly, <laughs> I'm in love with that glide foot. Yes? Yes. A vote of confidence, yes. two votes. There we go. All right, <laughs> so we have everything set up over there. I think we're ready to then move over here. So I have, uh, actually, you're going to notice we have the Amara. We're so happy to have this Amara. This is actually, you're going to see a couple of different things here because this is a prototype. So we were so excited to be able to film with it that we said, we'll take it. <laughs> we want to start with it. So we are. So we have a couple of different things that you'll notice. Since Cheryl's going to be doing the groovy board, we have a groovy board adapter on here. So that moved where my uh, laser light is attached. Uh, normally, you would have it attached to this little post right here. But because we have this on at the same time, we're using it from here. So that's one difference that you'll notice. You can play a game with yourself, see how many different ones you notice. <laughs> how about that? <laughs> okay, so I have my needle down. The needle and the laser light represent each other. So the first thing I'm going to do is set this up. I want to decide where I'm going to start on my pattern and I'm just going to mark it in pencil. Um, you can, there are a lot of different ways you can use um, to use your pantographs. You can put a piece of vinyl over it, you can put a grid over it. You know what, preview paper would work for that. Preview paper would work great. Um, you pay a lot of money for your pantographs so you want to take care of them. But I'm fine with just doing a pencil mark. And I'm going to line this up so that my, I'm going to figure out where I'm going to start stitching. So I want to start right in here. I'm going to just draw me a line that that is my beginning. So that represents the edge of your, where you want your needle to be, right? Right. That's where I want my needle. And then, you know, this is <laughs> handy quilter tape. We actually have blue painter's tape that you can buy. And there's also a blue painter's tape that's for wallpaper that comes off your paper easily. So if so, you want to use your patterns again and again, that might be the best tape to use. Right. So I have taped this down. I've drawn that first line. Now I need to draw the lowest point of my pattern. So that's going to be clear down here. You can see those dip down in. So I'm going to come all the way down so that I'm making kind of a corner right there where those two meet. And that's actually where my needle's going to be, so I'm going to adjust my laser so it's right in that corner. Okay, when you get your laser, you really want to make sure that you get that adjusted so that it doesn't shift while you're stitching because there's nothing more disappointing than having that come off just a little bit, right? Oh, and then you're stitching over top of your previous stitching and... 
That's not fun yes. to, un to take out. We don't like to un unpick. All right, so I'm starting right here, and I'm lined up there. There's a couple of things I need to check. One is that I always leave things on the fabric. <laughs> So you want to, because you're quilting from the back of the machine, you want to make sure everything is cleared off on the front. I'm going to check. This is kind of a small pattern, so I know I have plenty of throat space to quilt it, but I do want to check that I can come all the way to the back side and check that I can go all the way to the top. Then we're going to check all the way to the other end. I'll let you do that, Cheryl, and figure out where we're going to stop over there. I think we're going to stop about right here. You're at the end of your fabric. Right so here. How about if you make a pencil line? Look, I'm letting you touch my pantograph. Okay. <laughs> I'll hold that for you. All right. So she's making a line right where the laser, not where the needle or the fabric stops, but where that needle says the fabric stops, where the laser shines on the pattern. All right, so that tells me I can stitch over to that line. That line right there. All right. I'm going to bring this back over here and just set it in. The other thing that I want to do is what I talked about. I'm going to follow this pattern so that I know exactly where it goes. There's some different kind of things since it has an echo. Which stitches first, the inside or the outside? And then as I get right here, you can see that it crosses over. I'm going to follow that right through so that it kind of just flows. So that could be a spot that you could get a little bit confused on. Right? Yes. So I still am feeling like I want to kind of familiarize myself with this. Okay, some things that you'll know about this pattern. First of all, in order to get points, you have to pause on the points. You have to pause there or it'll just round out. The other thing is that um, I wish I was really good and I could just quilt, 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 quilt. <laughs> but I, for some reason, especially demonstrating and talking, I cannot quilt <laughs> and move my feet and breathe and blink at the same time. So you'll have to do the same, especially when you're starting. You'll need to blink. You'll need to breathe. So stop on a point rather than on the middle of a curve so that you can take those steps or take those breaths or blink. The other thing is, is after you've done just a little bit, stop and take a look and make sure that everything is stitching out where, where you thought it was going to stitch out. So what do you have your machine on? I like my machine set on cruise and I like uh, a low cruise. Um, I like it to just, when I stop it, stops in that point. It'll start, you know, kind of so cruises into it. So it'll take maybe one it. or two yes, little tiny stitches. Finishes off that point. I like it to, um, I'm using um, Omni thread, so I would like it probably to be, I'm setting this at 10 stitches per inch. Now, normally you would have a real busy print here, not this plain fabric where you're going to see every bobble I make because <laughs> <laughs> I stitch this out. And that's the good thing about doing a pantograph is the pattern goes this way and the quilt goes this way. And it's just a lovely texture on your quilt, right? And nobody looks and sees that you got off the line. So one of the things you want to remember is as you're stitching that, if you get off the line, don't just jerk back on, right? <laughs> It can be a design element. Do <laughs> yeah, it again if you have that, to. But if you just kind of get back on. So I kind of like, especially at first, think this is just kind of a suggestion of what I should be doing, and then I'll do it. That right? takes some of the pressure off, too. <clears throat> that takes the pressure off. All right. So uh, the other thing I like is I like to do needle down. And then when I'm stitching, if I stop, the machine's not going to keep wiggling around. That's It'll true. stop. So that's why the other reason that I like cruise is because I have that choice. All right, so we've talked about how to stitch that down. We've talked about uh, needle down, the cruise, stitches per inch. We've got our fabric all set. Are we ready to sew? I think so. <laughs> Do you need me to go around the other side to pull up your bobbin thread? Uh, or can you reach it from there? You know, we have this great... Yeah, we probably better pull it up. Okay. All right. All right. So nobody thinks I know how to do tools very good. So I've asked Cheryl to tell you about the laser light. 
Okay, so the laser light, you don't want a really wide laser light. You want just a fine pinpoint. So right mm -hmm. here in the laser light, there's a little slit that you can adjust that laser light so that you just have that little fine pinpoint of a dot. It's so if easier you have this to big follow. blob you're chasing around, there's a way to fix it. That's right. So you'll just adjust this. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. So tighter is smaller. Right. Okay. So then this is the piece that will fit onto that post if you don't have the groovy so board adapter. So that would sit on the bottom and you want the laser light coming off the top. All right. And these just tighten and loosen to get it on there. And you want to make sure that they're all tightened up nice and snug so that they're not sliding Cheryl. around. Cheryl and I are really good at unpicking, but we don't like it. <laughs> That's right. All right. We are about ready to quilt. So now here comes the part. You've got to stand behind the machine. Okay, and I get comfortable, so your feet are about shoulder width apart. Kind of lock your arms against your side. You don't want to be doing this with your arms. You're going to be doing this with your um, hands. Uh, you know, you kind of get your whole body into it, kind of get into the groove of moving. So if you put some music on, that might help too, right? It has to be country, Cheryl. Okay, well, <laughs> that would be okay for you. All right. So we're ready. Now, the thing is, is I think you get back here and you get so nervous, but take a big breath, let your shoulders just relax, and I am just going to follow the line. So I have two choices. I can start right where I'm at, and I'm just going to follow that straight line up till I get to the pattern, or I could make myself a little start point at the top there where the pattern starts. But I'm just going to follow that straight line up because I'm right in the batting. All right, there's my start point. Now, going faster is better than going really slow and trying to stay on, right on the line. So you kind of want to have a little speed to it. That makes the curves. Well, and that makes it smoother, doesn't it? And it makes it smoother. So big breath, go for it. Here we go. Stop on the points. You're following that really well, Marie. Oh, no, you're going to jinx me. Okay, this is that part where, okay, I've done a little bit of stitching. I want to make sure that I'm stitching, that I'm on the fabric. So just take a look Looks and good. make sure everything's going right. And then pull up your sleeves and... So how do you know if your thread breaks? Because that's not there. But you know what? You kind of can hear it if you listen for it. And you can kind of watch out of the corner of your eye and see that things are going. So... So have you ever stitched a whole row without your thread? Do I have to say? <laughs> I have. <laughs> Let's just say it happens, it's all right? It's practice, right? It's practice. <laughs> all right, here we go. We're just going to finish this out. I am getting close to the end of my pattern. I can see that line that Cheryl drew. That's the last of where I want to do my quilting. So I want to um, mention a couple of things. For one thing, I have my laser at a 45 degree. I want it out instead of straight down so that I can see better. So I've kind of angled it that direction. And as I come to the end, I have choices. I Cheryl did such a good job drawing that line that she took in the whole pattern. If it was inside the pattern, then I'd have some choices to make because I don't want to leave any blank spaces on my quilt. In other words, parts that aren't quilted. 
Anytime I come to a straight line, I'm going to follow the straight line and then get back on the pattern. But Cheryl drew it so good that I just have to eliminate just a little tiny bit. So we'll go ahead and move on to that very last pattern that we can quilt. And if I was going slow, those curves would have kind of wobbles in them. I think they're fairly round. I kind of took a peek and it looks like I know what I'm doing. All right, here I come. I'm getting to that straight line. So I'm just going to follow the line down, come back up and around, and I should be done. So let's take a look at the quilt, see where the machine is. Oh, Cheryl, we're right at the end. Woohoo! good job. I think we planned it that way. <laughs> I think we planned it that way. Now comes the part where we're going to advance the fabric. All right. So when we put this pattern down on the table, there was a dotted line, which actually represents a stitched line. And we put that close to us, so close to the bar here. And that's going to help as we advance the fabric then we will know exactly how much to advance between each row. We'll do it the same each time. Okay. I'm going to find, I am going to put my needle in one of these points. So on the quilt side, I'm just going to put my needle there. And I kind of like to do it in the middle. And I like a point because I recognize a point as opposed to a curve. And this one looks like I paused there and got a good point as opposed to some that aren't. <laughs> All right, right in the point. All right, now we're going to advance our fabric and watch the laser light because the laser is going to move down until it gets to that stitched path on. Okay, so take our clamps off. Okay, we're in the clear view of this studio frame. So we're just advancing right until that laser light hits, whoa, 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 back up just a speck, until it gets right into that V. So it's going to get right in the V, right there. So this is the same little point that was up here, is now down here, and that's where my laser light is. So it looks like I'm pretty close. I'm not sure if my laser moved or my needle moved or how we started out. But whatever is on the quilting, that's what matches up with the laser. So I'm just going to make sure that those are both in the same place. So I can adjust my laser just a speck so that they do match up. All right, there was a lot of preparation there. We advanced the fabric, we put our clamps back on, stitched down the throat space. I have the needle back in right where I'm ready to start stitching. But I really like to verify that I have the placement right. So I can just follow and make sure that when the laser is on, whoops, this row, the row I already stitched, that it matches up with what's on my quilt. What do you think, Cheryl? I think it looks pretty Okay, there's a point, and there's a point. You're pretty close. Yeah, what I'm if you check these low points and make sure they're <coughs> not going to stitch over? Oh, they'll fit fine in there. Okay. I hate to unpick, so I always check, check twice, but that's as easy as it is. I'm ready to start stitching my second row, and then I'll advance, and pantographs are actually a lot of fun. They're not so hard. Well, and it's an easy way for someone to get a design on a quilt, so yeah. they can complete the whole process. And how easy are groovy boards? <laughs> <laughs> They're even easier. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Well, Marie, pantographs were fun. But you know what? You can kind of wobble off that line a little bit. So I've got groovy boards. And with the groovy boards, they have an actual groove that the stylus stays in, so it's really easy to follow. Foolproof. That, well, not foolproof, <laughs> but close. <laughs> so we have a lot of different styles of boards. We have boards that you only need one board, boards that we highly recommend that you have at least two boards, and we'll show you why. And then we have some boards that we recommend that you have the full width of your quilt, just so that you can keep it lined up. So a couple of the boards, or the boards that we have that are just single boards, we have 
the square, which is the square in the square, and the dueling squares. We actually had them cut this board in half so that you can turn these squares on point to use oh. on your quilt because you couldn't turn the full board. Yeah. So that's one board. Another board that we have single is the feathered wreaths. So we have two different sizes of feathered wreaths. But some of our boards, you can look at them and there's other uses for them. So if I cover up the outside of my feather, what have I got in that design in the center? Uh, saw blade? Feathers? You have a saw blade or a sun oh. or just the inside of the feathers if you just wanted to do the feathers on the inside of a circle. So you can look at the boards and find different purposes for the same board. Oh, I want to get my money's worth. So. I know, right. So then we have the circle boards and they come originally like this, but it's the circle in a circle and the spiral. But we wanted to use the circle in a circle, but we only wanted to stitch every fourth ring of the circle. So we just took a Sharpie marker and colored inside of those rings so that it was very easy to jump from ring to ring without having to sit and count. So that's something that you can do with your board to help this make one, it. This one is well loved. It is very <laughs> well loved. It's even started to yellow a little bit, but that's Wait. because we use it in the studio a lot. Yeah. So just some of the other boards that we have really quick. We have boards that could be used just as a border or you can use the board for a whole quilt. So these kind of offset, don't they? They do. Okay. And then we have the spiral one. Oh, this can be used as a border or as the full board. This actually makes a really cute quilt. And this is an easy one. If you've got granddaughters or grandsons that you want to start quilting, groovy boards are a really oh. easy way for them to start quilting a quilt. And be successful. And be successful, yes. Yeah, have it look really cute. Oh, I like that one. So this is one of our boards. It's just, it's a single design, but it's a little more detailed than some of our boards. Just a So this one would nest. Yes, it would. And it's got reference points for lining up when you go to roll. So that's just like that dotted line that I had with pantographs it that is. showed the previous or reference uh -huh. line for stitching. Okay. So then we have our board that has the apples and the cherries. And we actually use this board, but instead of using the whole board, we just use the apple motif in the center of a block. And it worked out great. Oh, see, I like all these ideas to get my money's worth. <laughs> Then we have boards that have different designs on the same board for borders or sashings. If you have a wider sashing, you could use this. We also have a board that has three different styles of leaves on it. And you can use it for the leaves or one of the sets of leaves looks like Christmas tree lights. So you could put it in the border of a Christmas quilt and oh. it would be Christmas lights. We also have some boards that are smaller boards, just the six inch wide boards. These would work great in um, a border or for people that still have the old Handy Quilter 2 frames and where they put their own machine on them, these boards would work on that. So for they a don't narrow have throat space. For a narrow throat yeah. space, yes. So the two boards that we recommend that you have the full width of your quilt just for lining it up is the clamshells and the Baptist fan because these are really easy to get off. We've got this quilt here, and if you look at this quilt, you can see that the clamshells are lined up in rows. And with the groovy boards, you want to keep them straight across your quilt. And if you don't have the boards that go the full width of the quilt, then you're going to be jumping your boards across. Does that make sense? That makes sense. I like this. I think that's just, you know, just a clamshell puts a great texture on a quilt. It does. Okay, so Marie, we've got our boards set up here on the table that we're going to do. And this is Field of Flowers, and this is really a popular design. Yeah. And it works out really well on a quilt, and it's pretty, and it's easy to do. But the reason that we recommend having more than one board is that if I were to quilt this, where am I going to go when I get to this point on my board? If I get to this point, I've either got to stop 
and hope I don't bobble and move things around and move this board over so that I can start here again, where if I've got two boards, I can stitch off here, continue on to my second board, then I can move my first board into the third board position. So that helps with keeping your design straight. So you want to at least have two You do want to have at least two board boards. That you buy. Except for the square circle. Right. right, right. So we've pretty well set this up the same way that you set up the pantographs in that we've just advanced our quilt here and we're starting here. I want to start just off the edge of my quilt all the way around. So I've taped down a line here so that I know exactly where I'm going to start. We've got my sides basted down and I'm actually ready to go. When you're stitching on the boards, you want to make sure that you hug the side of the board. This groove is wide enough that the stylus actually can wobble back and forth a little bit and that's where you're going to get those grandma stitches. And even though we're grandmas, we don't oh, want grandma Cheryl. stitches, right? <laughs> so you're going to hug the board on one side as you come to a point you're going to pause so that you get that nice crisp point and you want to keep your machine flowing smoothly. So should we quilt it out? Okay, looks like everything is taped down. What are these little rings? Oh, these little rings hold the two boards together. But just for security, I've got my tape here on the board to help hold it. Even though it's taped down, I still want to be careful that as I'm going through my grooves, I'm not pushing really hard on uh -huh. the board because I can knock it out of place. And also, if I'm going too fast, I can actually jump out of the groove. So, so not I'm entirely foolproof. Not entirely <laughs> okay. foolproof. So Marie, if you notice right here, I'm going to start. But as I come along, I'm going to run into my tape right here. So what I'm going to do at that point with the pantographs, you could just stitch. Yeah, I could go straight up. But I'm up. just going to pick up my stylus and move it forward to this point. But as I'm going around the sides of my board, I want to keep that stylus right next to the edge of the board. And that's what hugging the board is, is that you want to be right there at that edge. So let's see how this goes. And uh, the same thing here. You want to know the path that you're going. So I'm going to make sure that I know where I'm going because it is easy and some boards will go forward and then kind of come back. And if it's not always going forward, sometimes it'll come back under the stylus and so you need to know where it's going to go. So let's go. I pause in my corner, hug that side of the board. And at this point, I'm just going to stop. I'm going to raise my stylus up, and I'm actually going to stitch forward just a little bit and drop my stylus back down. Oh, you just stitched there. I thought you would raise your needle. Well, because I'm out of yeah. my fabric, I'm off of the edge of my fabric, I can just stitch forward. You're so tricky. Okay, go for it, so now we? we're going to go. Pause on my points. The other thing that you want to make sure of is that you have that stylus down nice and snug so it's not loose as it goes around these curves. The same thing here, you want to just walk along with you as you're stitching. I like how this pattern just nests into itself. It I, does. I think it will be a great texture. That's probably why it's so popular. Now see here at this point my board kind of comes backwards and if I didn't know where I was going I could get lost. Although not too bad because the stylus is just kind of leading me where I need to go. Looking good. And the same thing with this. I want to stop. And when I stop, I want to stop in a point and I want to check my quilting and see how it's looking. It's not too bad. 
you're in the fabric. That's the good part. I want to make sure, too, that my stylus is really snug. I noticed that it was wobbling just a little bit. So you want to make sure that it's snug and staying in place. Okay, now which direction am I going? Uh, back the other way. I'm coming back this <laughs> way. Oh, you're trying to get me, aren't you? <laughs> I'd make you take those stitches out. Okay, Marie, now look, I'm coming close to where my two boards are joining, but if you notice, it's just a smooth transition, and those boards are level, and so I should be able to just go right across there. And these little circles there. don't bother anything. They don't. They just... So I should be All able right. to just continue on and go right on to my next board. This one actually goes back and forth a couple of times. Some of our boards, like this one, will only have one pass on them, but some of our boards, like that spiral, will have two passes before you have to roll. So when you advance, you pretty much advance the same way you do with the pantograph. You do. We don't have the lines to line up on all of the boards. A couple of the boards do have some reference lines. But this, we're just going to use the design and the edge of the board as we roll forward. Almost went the wrong way there. If you notice over here, if you can peek over the machine, I put tape at the other end so that I know where to stop. And I'm going to do the same process once again. I'm going to come to my tape. I'm just going to lift up my stylus. I'm going to stitch along till I get to the next point. I'll drop my stylus down, do my little curve, stitch to the next point, drop that stylus down. That finishes that off really nice. Raise my stylus up. Oh, you're not leaving anything unquilted. And you're there's kind our of end. The and that's the end? That's the end. So the same thing with our pantograph. I'm going to find a point, and I'm going to drop my needle. And I can line it up really easy because my stylus is right there. So I'm going to drop my needle, I'm going to make sure my stylus is raised up, and then I'm going to roll my quilt until my stylus hits about a half inch beyond the design. So this is the same theory as the pantograph. The needle represents the stylus. Yes, it does. So I know exactly where my quilting ends and where my, by where my needle is, lines up with the... Yeah, yeah, okay, right. I got it. So now we're ready to advance our quilt. All right, let's do it. Okay. Okay, so Marie, if you'll just roll it, I'll tell you when to stop. I want to stop. Can you see my stylus? You want to watch the stylus as you're rolling. And I want to go about a half inch beyond, about right there. And then I'm going to stop. Okay. And I want to snug everything up. I'll put my clamps back on. Then we'll base down the sides of the quilt and we'll be ready to stitch out the second row after we check and make sure that our positioning is correct. Okay, so Marie, now I'm going to check and I'm going to look at my low points on my board and make sure that they're not stitching into my previous line of stitching. So this is really easy because I can put my stylus down and then peek across my frame here and <laughs> see but I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be about a half inch away from my design. Let's do it again. Okay. Come on, let's do it again. Oh, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> and I would check all the way along. Just like a pantograph. Just like a pantograph. 
Nice. So then we're ready to start quilting our design again. I'm going to drop my needle where I want to start and put my stylus down. I'm going to reach across and bring up my bobbin thread. Too bad you don't have a friend. I need a friend. Where's my friend? So I've got my... And it's all tied off. I love that tie-off stitch. Right. And then, once again, I'm just going to start stitching. When I come to my tape, I'm going to raise my stylus and stitch, stitch to my next groove. Drop that stylus in, and I'm ready to go. Go that's like the wind. How, that's how easy groovy boards and pantographs are. It is. It's a great way to finish a quilt. So I hope we've taught you something. Maybe you found out something you didn't know. It's been fun. It's been fun. Join us again on HQ Live.